American Board of Medical Directorship made this beautiful graphic here that kind of talks about um, what is required to, to basically be a medical director. One is to have the, the skill set, which is basically reviewing charts and understanding what you need to do as a medical director. Unfortunately, there are some people out there that, that don't know that. And so we do recommend that you consider having your medical director uh, pursue training with the American Board of Medical Directorship. And most of the time, they're happy to do that because it opens up a whole another level of income opportunities for them. Uh, and for most medical directors, once they get one practice underneath them, they say, hey, I'm a medical director for practice X. Most of the time they realize like, hey, this is actually kind of fun. I enjoy helping people. I enjoy helping entrepreneurs. Um, I enjoy seeing, you know, this practice grow and they end up taking multiple. So <laughs> most medical directors are not just, a, you know, they have multiple people they direct. Two, uh, they define the medical consultation process. So it's really important that they have that definition. Uh, like I said before, we we like if you work with us, if you do training with us, we provide all that for you. So it's not a big deal. Number three, they implement staff training and documentation. This is stuff that you have to do anyway. If you if you run a medical clinic, obviously, if you have staff, like you're going to have to train them on HIPAA. The same stuff you have to do at the hospital, right? Everybody has to do that. Uh, like, obviously, if you're if you're using any kind of needle, which you probably are, <laughs> you're going to have to have sharp training, right? You're going to have to have the basic stuff regarding that. We also have that as part of the medical director uh, package as well. And then finally, deploy the protocols and standing orders, making sure that these protocols and standing orders are in place so that that way you as the business owner can execute whatever you need to do to get to treat the patient. Um, but they have to make sure that these orders are, are ready and they're signed by them, ready to go. And then finally, uh, one process that most people forget is an ongoing quality assurance where, you know, most states, they require some kind of measure of quality assurance to make sure the patients are happy. And this could be a patient satisfaction score. This could be, you know, uh, surveys of patients leaving. There's so many different ways to do this. Um, it's very simple. And it would be something that you would ideally do for your business anyway, because, you know, if, if you haven't already started to ask for reviews and these things from your patients, Probably a good idea <laughs> because, uh, you know, one of the things you can do is ask them basically, say, you know, hey, how likely are you uh, to recommend my practice to a friend? Uh, and then you can get a, a sense of, you know, from one to 10, how likely they're, they're able they want to rate that. You know, so if they're if they're very strong that they would recommend this, uh, then you can measure that. That's called the net promoter score. Not to get too much of the weeds here, but there's certain things that, that we teach the medical director uh, course and things that we teach at our trainings uh, that can help you. Um, but basically, you do need to have a process to make sure there's some form of quality assurance where you can say, hey, these people are being treated well. Uh, we're constantly monitoring the quality of the, the healthcare we deliver uh, and we haven't had any issues.